myself. Uh, my name is Inge Donkervoort. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands and I'm a member of the Zerti team. I also have a company, D-Learning, and uh, we in our company, we work a lot with Zerti. Um, uh, today, I'm going to show you how you can use Zerti to build an escape room. And we actually are going to build a very short escape room uh, together with you. Um, I'm not going to talk about learning goals or um, uh, things you have to think of, uh, that kind of things, because that's all set in the, in the previous sessions. Um, I'm going to show you some examples and, I'm, and we're going to build an es escape room. And for the ones that don't know Zerti, I will, share, uh, I will explain a bit about what it is. Um, you, see all my, you all see my screen? Yes, thank you. Yeah, OK. Um, so what you see here is a Zerti object. And we have different Zerti objects. This is a, um, a Zerti object with interactivities where you can have pages behind each other. But you can also have a Zerti object what's more like um, a web page. But in this case, I use the Zerti object uh, with all the pages uh, behind each other, uh, as you can see here below. And when I click to the next page, um, you see just some text and an, and an image um, about uh, Zerti, and I can go to the next and the next page. Uh, but what is Zerti? Zerti is an authoring tool. It's an open source uh, uh, project, so you can download it and upload it in your, on your server for free. Um, and it has a lot of uh, interactive pages you can use. We have more than 75 pages I think you can use, uh, like drag and drop, um, quizzes, uh, interactive video, um, 360 media pages. Um, I'm going to show you a few, but there are a lot more of them. Um, and and uh, one of the things that's really good on Zerti is that you can easily share modules with other uh, Zerti users and um, share each other's uh, modules and uh, change them and uh, um, uh, use them again. Um, also, there's really a lot of uh, effort, uh, made a lot of effort around accessibility. So uh, each new page that's in each new function functionality we have in will be checked on accessibility. And of course, um, a part of that accessibility is also what the user put in. This, when you are uh, a developer and you put in terrible things, then Zerti can manage to make that accessible. So you have to do um, a good job on that yourself as well, but we help you uh, a lot with a lot of accessible things in it. Um, those modules you can share like with a link or with, with SCORM or for the more technical people with LTI or an XAPI can be used in it um, and you can embed them. So there are different ways to use them. Uh, also in Teams you can use them, uh, use the link, just um, add the link or embed it and it looks really nice uh, to use it. Um, I've put a link to this learning object, we call this learning objects, uh, into the chat, so you can see later or now uh, what's in it for yourself. This is the first example. This is from Helen Godbane and Shannon Corinona. Uh, it's a somewhat older um, escape room they created in Zerti. Uh, when you click on the image, it will open a new a window and in that new window you have the uh, escape room. We tried to use the audio, there's a lot of audio also in this escape room, but uh, uh, we couldn't get it to manage uh, with themes, so it's now without uh, audio, but you can hear it for yourself. Um, it's a learn, it's a, an escape room about uh, crime against accessibility. Um, when you go through it, you see the learning goals in this case, um, and then you get a message from Mr. Uh, HQ, and it's always nice uh, to see. Um, you don't hear it, I do. So you get uh, a story, and you are drawn into the story. You have to stop Dr. Evil, no access, and you have to uh, do some um, ex um, 
some puzzles uh, to stop him. And this, that is explained here. Um, and you get some more information about the learning uh, about the escape room. And here your, is your first puzzle. This is an image with clickable points on it. Uh, I will show you later how you create it. But when I click here, and I saw it before, uh, the, the, what's used here, um, it's a mix between Dutch and English because I didn't create the images again in, Dutch, in English. So um, it's a puzzle for you as, um, to, to uh, translate the Dutch as well. <laughs> um, so um, I, uh, when I solve this puzzle, I can go to um, crack the code or I can go back to my timeline to see uh, if I missed some information. In this case, I've cracked the code, so I'm going into here. Um, I'm going a bit away. You can see I will change the passwords later. And we had it right, so we can go to the next level. And then in the next level, uh, this is again an image where I added uh, access points on and uh, I get the next puzzle. And in this case, I have to start a puzzle, fill in some text and get a code and go to the next uh, one. And then in the end, I will go through it and fill in the codes. Um, So I go to the last level. Here's a puzzle again. I did manage to do the puzzle and I fill in the last code. Um, and I'm on the last uh, level and here I get a um, video again about uh, dismantling the bomb. And then in the end, um, I get all kind of noise that, uh, hey, yeah, we dismantled in and oh, this, the world is saved and uh, we are very happy. So this is one of the escape rooms you can build with 30. Uh, I have some other examples. I'm not going to show them uh, all this, uh, this much uh, in case of the time, but this is made by Menno de Waal. Uh, from the Zerti, uh, uh, from a school, a vocational school in the Netherlands. And he was a, a, a starting user of Zerti and he created this escape room. And it's also uh, an image. And on that image, you can do uh, lots of things to find out what's happening. And don't, um, it's, it's Google Translate or um, bad English, it's Dutch English, but I hope you can understand it. So in this room, there is a lot of information you have to find to, to escape because you're locked in by your students. Um, I can click here and then the light go off. I can click it on. Um, I can see here there's a little paper on the, on the ground. Um, and uh, I know in this case, I have to go back here and there I have some other books and then I have to do something here and I can back go back again and then I can escape. This is another escape room as the the one before, but the one before was uh, linear. In this case, you are in the same room and you have to escape from this room. I go to the next page. Oh, I have to uh, add an access code. Did someone see the access code maybe? somewhere. I think this is the example that you go into the escape room and the first clue was on the poster before the door. I go this back, it's lead, very... This might lead back to some of the conversation in the earlier sessions where, you know, you go in and you're not paying any attention because you're just enthusiastic. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Does any, anyone see the access code now? Yes, <laughs> very easy, it's MX. Um, I just put this in to see that you, on every page you can have a sort of access code in Zerti. So uh, no, matter, no matter what page you use, uh, you can add an access code. So 
I'm on the next page now. Um, I'm going back because I want to uh, tell you something else. So I'm here and I go to the next page. Oh, now I've already solved the, the code. So. so I come here and a very clever student says, OK, this is page five here on the top. Um, OK, then I go to page six. And then you uh, skipped the page before. So um, when you create an escape room in Zerti like this, you have to do some configuration in the beginning to make sure that they can't do this. So I go back to this one, MX. This is um, a Dutch es escape room, but I wanted to show it to you because uh, this is really made. Someone made an escape room in a box. And uh, we tried to digitalize that escape room in that box. So I'm going to open it again. When I put it on English with Google Chrome, then the hotspots doesn't work anymore. So I can't do that. So you you wake up and um, you hear, uh, in this case, you hear a, a story it, to get you into the story. Where are you? What is it, what's the goal? What do you have to do? Uh, what uh, are the things you have to think of? And then you go to the next page and to go into the escape room. So now she took pictures from above. Uh, that This was before the 360 image uh, page or 360 image uh, cameras. Um, so I can go to this room. When I go into this room, I can click all, on all kinds of things. For example, this, hey, here's a blanket. What could I do with it? Um, and you can add some, um, how do you call it, um, uh, hints that doesn't do anything. Uh, distractors, that's the, the word I was searching for. Uh, I can click here, it's also a distractor, but here I have a, a puzzle. And in that puzzle, I have a magnif mag magnifier, is that a good word? Okay, <laughs> magnifier, and I can look, oh, I know I have to look something here. Oh, here's an arrow. That's pointing to the left and oh, here's a number 29. OK, I write everything down. That's one of the instructions uh, you got. Um, and here's another puzzle uh, with flipping cards. And I'm not going to explain what it is, but when you do it right, you have the uh, right access code. Um, but I want to go to the other room. So when I solve the puzzles here, um, I have three buttons here below. Uh, one is, then I go to the map, and I've only one room open yet. So, um, or when I don't know what I can do, uh, I don't solve it. Then I get the hints. Eh? That was also said in the previous sessions. Uh, make sure you get hints. And in this case, every time you get a hint, um, you get less points on uh, at the end. So I go back to the um, map. I go into the room again. Oh, but I know the access code now. So I'm going to add it here. And I said, control it. Yes, it, I succeeded. I can go to the kitchen. So now I'm in the kitchen. And if I want to, to go back to the living room, I can do that because I have access to the living room as well. In this case, the difference on this escape room as uh, the others is that this is historically. So it's not linear. You're not going from one to one to one, but you can go everywhere and try to solve the puzzle. Sometimes a puzzle is the first part is in one room and the other part is in the second room and then you need it in the third room. So uh, you, it's like a real uh, escape place. Uh, uh, as, uh, yeah, as you know, with live escape rooms. Uh, so here you also have a lot of puzzles again, and it, this one is just for fun. Um, you can look, uh, who is this? Oh, this is, I have to write it down, I think. And then in the end, you can solve the puzzle. We are not going to solve the puzzles again, so I'm going to the next room. And let me see. Oh, I've solved them again. So now I'm in the um, office space. Um, I can 
go to the uh, the locker, and here you see um, we had um, 29 on the first in the first room. So we have 29 here, um, and we have to go to the left. That was the arrow. So 29 to the left, um, and I need some other things um, to add uh, in here to get the code, but. Uh, you can solve it. And again, if I want to go back to the to the other rooms, I can do that from there. Um, so I can go back here. I solve the puzzles again. I'm going to um, seven four eight. I'm going into the hallway, and um, when I'm finished here, I go into the oh. I succeeded I escaped and I had one hint uh, used uh, my score is 79% uh, from 100 uh, and I have some videos here um, so this is a historical escape room, also an example of what you can do with uh, with Xerti. And this is the last one I'm going to show before we are going to build one. Um, this is very simple. This is not an escape room. This is an escape activity in Xerti version 3.11. The media page 360 is added and that all the other uh, escape rooms you saw were from before that. But with that media uh, 360 page, you can do a lot more and also in escape room. So this is created by Faye Cross from the Zerti community. And she's also from uh, Nottingham University. And uh, we saw it before in, uh, I don't know what tool it was, uh, one of the presentations in the, in the short talks. Um, but the 360 page is really strong to, to use for um, escape rooms. In this ca case, I'm in the castle. I can um, see information about the gatehouse. I can go to another castle, or not another castle, another part of the castle, and I go further. Now I'm outside the castle. I can go back in again. And I have to find information because let me see where I am now. Oh, I have to go back here. Because here is a hotspot with an, um, a small lock on it. So I have to find that information to go further. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Maybe some of you know this by heart. Does someone knows it? Which king died in Newark Castle in 12,016? Nobody? Not looking like it. I think Brianna's got the answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. King John. And in this case, it's a bit of a disappointment because the only thing I can do now is look into the tower. Uh, but um, you can imagine that if you create this in your own escape room, that you can do a lot with this. Oh, Dr. Google helped. Yes. <laughs> so um, one last thing to uh, uh, resume a bit about what we hear today and what uh, what you have to do when you create an escape room, also when you use Xerti. Uh, um, so what's the learning goal? Uh, create a mind map, create a storyline, do that all, uh, have all the preparation before you start to build it. That's much more easier than build it and uh, have to find it out when you're building it. Um, the clues, the puzzles, all that kind of things. Um, also, which tools are you using? Because you can use Xerti, but in Xerti, you can use uh, Padlet, you can use uh, H5P, you can add anything you want uh, into it. 
If you use Xerti, then here is a list from the things that are mostly used when you're creating um, escape rooms. I'm going to show a few of them uh, later. And the former speaker uh, talks about um, uh, uh, chat GPT to get, um, to get a story or to get um, inspired. And I did that this morning to see what it does. And I said, create a scenario for an online escape room in Xerti. Escape from the office with three activities to get the code. And then it get this. I don't know if you can see it, but it's it's uh, uh, very good to get inspiration about sort of puzzles, about the storyline, um, if you are stuck and don't know what to do with the subject. Um, now it can be just for fun or for uh, that you a subject that you want to um, uh, do some more about or onboarding or um, uh, maybe a, a first start of a subject in your class. And then the distribution I already said is very easy when you use 30. I'm going to show you that, that also in the presentation. Um, if you want um, any information about this, please send me an uh, a message, then I can give you an answer. So this is 30. This is the workspace uh, in 30. And I'm going to, here are my um, modules I already created. I'm going to create a new, um, a, a totally new module. So I'm going to call this demo escape. Okay, I already created one before, but I'm going to put it here. So I'm going to back with what we created. So I, will, I don't know if you are all on a bigger screen, but I hope you can see it. I'm going to uh, have two screens open. So this one, uh, and I'm going to play uh, the, the escape room here. So what I want to do is um, have an escape room where I escape from the office. So um, first, this is not a page yet. Uh, this is just all the configuration from my module, from my uh, escape room. Um, I will put it on in English in this case. I will give it another theme because the theme uh, I had now was this one, eh? the, the black uh, 30 theme, highly accessible, but not as pretty. So I will use the de-learning theme in this case to create the um, escape room. Um, and um, I do the navigation linear in this case, but I can also choose the historic one where we talked about earlier. Now I'm going to create the first page and the first page is the first landing page that the students see. Uh, I could create some text or some media uh, pages. These are all pages you can add. This is the most important one. These are all interactivities. Uh, so you have drag and drop, um, hotspots, uh, text matching, um, a number of uh, pages you can use. But in this case, I'm going to add a navigator and I'm going to add, no, sorry, a connector, hotspot image connector. And this is where I place it, but this is the first one, so that doesn't matter. And I call it uh, escape from the office. This is what I'm going to see uh, later on. Um, I'm not going to use any text in here because I want to put an image, image in here and I want to be the image full. So I don't have place for a text. And then I'm going to search for my uh, image. I have prepared this a bit, so, uh, be, uh, otherwise you have to, uh, it takes a long time. And I'm going to use this one, this image, and it's put in my media folder. And this media folder is connected to this 
uh, escape room. So if I make a new one, it's empty again. And I'm just double click on it and it's here. Then here you see the description. This is very important to fill in because screen readers, uh, this is a kind of um, point for accessibility. Screen readers uh, will uh, read this out loud. So uh, someone with uh, visible impairment um, uh, does know what's, what's there. So image, uh, escape room, for example. Oh. Um, then, so I added the image and I, um, and I'm can now can play, press play. Then you see what you created. And that's, uh, the first page, but I can't do anything yet because I didn't put anything, uh, in here. Uh, so how are you going to do that? I want a hotspot here on the keyhole. So I go here below here, uh, you have new hotspot. So I click here on the hotspot. I, uh, maybe this was a bit quick. I can uh, click here on edit hotspot and it opens the image. And here I can put it abo above the keyhole and now I have a hotspot on the keyhole. What I also can do is um, make the keyhole Um, with, um, I don't know how you call it in English, but this way, that it's not rectangle, but this way. Okay, so I picked that one and I've now managed to make a hotspot on the cure. And then here I have to tell them, uh, tell the system what it's got to do when you press on that keyhole. Uh, but I don't have anything uh, else added here. So, um, uh, I'm going to add something and come back here then. I call this keyhole. Now I'm going to uh, add a new page. And in this case, I add the 360 image page. And I put it after uh, the other one. When that you do that wrong, it's no problem because you can move it around. Um, and I call this the instruction. prepared some text. So you're all alone in the office and it's really strange and you, you hear a strange noise um, and you can add noises. Uh, so I have, uh, for example, narration in this case, I uh, add it to the page. I go to my media folder again, I go to the narration where is it it's this one and now when you start the start this page after the amount of time you get a really ugly noise but you can't hear it because i can't get it to work in teams and i say autoplay it um, and then here i have to add a button start I go to my styles to make it a, a real button. And I say, when you press on start, you go to the next page, but I don't have a next page yet, so I don't, I can't do that. Um, and I'm going to add an image uh, on this page. I think I did the wrong page here. Wait a moment. It should be another. It should be the media, graphic, and sound. Instruction. No, oh, no. Just get this text. Go here and add it here. Uh, the narration, where is it? Select an image. I'm going to put an uh, image, in this case from Jane, because she is going to tell me something. Um, one moment. 
not from Jane, it's from the office. Okay, it's the office, here's the office. And I get, uh, I add the narration to it. So it gets the audio, really important to add also audio. And from the keyhole, uh, I said, I have the destination page and I can now go to the instruction. So if I go and play the escape room, I can go to the escape hall. And here I'm uh, in the office, I get some information and a briefing and I can press start. And this is the audio file that will play automatically. In the beginning it's, it's silence and then you get an, a really ugly noise. Then we go to the uh, next page and that is the office itself. And in the office, I'm going to use the 360 uh, page. And um, that you, you, you create with scenes. And in a scene, I can get an image again, but now I have to find the 360 image of the uh, office. Let's see where it is. Here it is. And now from the instruction, we have the start button. I say, OK, start. And with a 30 page link, I can say, go to the office. And if you see what you created now, you have the keyhole. Then you have the start button. And then you are in the office. Um, I have uh, 10 minutes left, so I'm not going to show, uh, I'm going to show you one thing and then I go to the example. Uh, if I want to, I have here a scene and I want to um, have an, uh, something done, I can create a hotspot and then here on the right side, I can do a lot of things. For example, I can add text, so blah, 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 and here is the image. Uh, I put my hotspot here. Let me go back to this scene here. I say uh, I want it full. And now I have my keyhole, my starting page, and my 360 uh, office page where I can press a button and I get the text. Now, this is how you build it. If I have more time, I can explain more, but this is what it is in the end. So I have the same as you saw before. You have the, the introduction uh, and the office. And if I go to play now, Going to start. Here I'm in the office. Um, let's see. Oh, here here is something. Oh, this is a, a, a brief of my uh, a letter of my colleague, and I see some letters here. Uh, they are uh, uh, larger or, or bold. Um, maybe I should remember that. Um, the E and S, let's see if I go here, there's nothing. Go here, oh, I need a password, so I have to look a bit further. Here is something else. And here I have an exercise, just a question or whatever you can add. In this case, uh, sorry, UK, uh, it was for stopper that won the Formula One, and I get, um, uh, another part of the code, so it's CA. And let me see where is the other thing. I can see it here. Yeah, it is where I thought it was. So here we have a present. So it's PE. So what is the code now to get out of this room? No.
Nobody paid attention. Yeah, it's dinner time, I think. Huh? Yeah, almost two letters for the cape. Yes, escape. That's the right one. So I go back to the the uh, window escape. And I am out. And I'm very happy that I'm out. So in uh, a few uh, uh, minutes or an hour, I created an escape room, uh, just very simple and uh, just for fun, no, no learning goals, um, but uh, in a very easy way um, in Zerti. There's one other thing that I want to, sh to tell you um, that is uh, how you work with that, that um, access code on a page. So, for example, if I want to have um, maybe this as a code, I'll make it bold. Um, so the code is y, uh, y O, and then I say on this page, I want to have an access code. The only thing that I have to add here is the access code. And if I play the escape room now, so, oh, I have to, to add my access code. But you still see above that you can skip the pages. And to uh, make sure that they can't, we have here the, let me see how it's called in, uh, in English. Force first page. Um, and I also don't want to see my uh, headers and footers said so I've always set, also set that up so if I go now to the room again and no headers no footers and no page three page four page five and I'm in the room again so this is in a very short time, uh, a small part of what Zerti can do. Um, the last thing I want to show you is how you are going to uh, distribute that. So I have the example here. The example, I go to the information about this project. I say, I go to access. I say, I, I want to put it in public. There are more things, but in this case, I want to have it a public link. Um, when I do that, I get the link here and I can distribute this to anyone in a browser or in an um, in email or whatever. So, are there any questions? Thank you, Inga. That was a really detailed uh, explanation of Zerti and showing just how quick and easy it can be to use, which is fabulous. And I see there's a lot of love in the chat for the Zerti team from everyone. So thank you, folks. Um, pop your hand up, um, switch on your video, type in the chat if you have questions for Inga or um, indeed if you've got some comments to share. Um, now, there was one question I did pick out. I think it was Maria. Apologies, it's quite far back in the chat. Um, yes, so Maria is asking about templates to work from in Zerti. And I know Lillian's added an answer, but maybe you want to chip in as well. And what was the question? Are there any templates to work from in Zerti? Um, no, but it's really, uh, really easy to create. If we have an escape room, uh, we can add it in Zerti as a sub template. And then instead of uh, creating the uh, an empty one, I can have here a template uh, escape room. And at the moment we are working on Dutch uh, templates, uh, but maybe it could be translated in English really uh, easily. Yeah. 
And one other thing is uh, the free, there is a page with free 360 panorama photos if you want to try things out. And on our website from D-Learning, you can um, ask for a playground uh, uh, access, then you can test this uh, all out as well.